In making the big transition from overtime elite to the Perth Wildcats of the NBL, Alex Sar quickly separated himself as one of the class's best prospects and eventually a number one pick contender. At a list of 7-1 with a 7-5 wingspan, Sar has a lot of what you want from a modern big. He's a great athlete who schemes versatile and high impact defensively, and though the offense is still a work in progress, he found a way to produce even in a winning situation that didn't offer the most abundant number of minutes or usage. Now there are still some key questions and things that he'll have to improve upon, but it's hard not to like what he brings towards the top of his class. Starting on the defensive end, Sar's combination of athleticism, versatility, and rim protection make him one of the premier defenders in this class and someone with a path to be among the best in the NBA. He's agile and moves very well at that size, able to flip his hips quickly and stick with smaller players and creators, and also cover ground to defend multiple actions on a given possession. And even the times where he is beat, he has the tools to seamlessly recover back into plays and make shots difficult on closeouts. He's just one of those players who has the ability to be quote unquote everywhere on a given possession, covering ground, communicating, and cleaning up mistakes. Sars pick and roll. Sars pick and roll defense and ability to execute multiple coverages there is another way he makes a big impact defensively. He can play to the level of the screen, keeping pull up threats at bay and players in front. He does well in drop, using his frame and length to deter and contest while backpedaling, and can get to spots some other bigs just can't. But what always gets people excited is what he can do on switches, using that mobility to contain many guards and wings out in space and bring an added level of versatility to a defense. Now he's obviously not going to step into the league as like Bam out of bio and a guy that you're just comfortable switching on any and everyone and there will probably always be players who will be able to take advantage of him in some way and schematically you want to keep him near the basket for his rim protection as much as possible but he undoubtedly has a unique ability at that size to stick with a wide range of players on the perimeter and I think as he continues to improve some of his footwork he'll be even better. Now he did have some prior issues with his positioning at times and I do think the drop can still be cleaned up in a lot of ways but the improvement he's made in that aspect and the recognition and communication he's shown give me confidence he'll continue on that trajectory Now, in addition to that, Sar is also a true presence as a rim protector, and it could end up the most important aspect of his game. It, of course, goes back to those physical and athletic tools that allow him to get the shots, but he also has good timing and instincts in close and did it while avoiding foul trouble and frequently being used as that low man or help side guy. He averaged one and a half blocks in about 17 minutes a game and posted a block percentage right at eight, which was first in the NBL among minute qualified players and on par with the likes of what Daniel Gafford, Nick Claxton, and Evan Mobley posted as prospects to name a few. And he was also among league leaders in defensive box plus minus. Now the important thing for him will be knowing when to sell out for blocks and contests and when to keep himself in position to finish possessions on the glass or stick to his position and help. That's an important piece to this role but he has made progress and a lot of it should come with reps and just learning what he can and can't get away with as a young big. He's also capable of playing passing lanes, but more so providing nail and gap help. He moves well enough on the perimeter that he can stunt and dig and cat and mouse and also get out the shots. And I love some of the flashes he had, peel switching and finding where he needed to be next. 
so the pieces to occupy other team defensive roles are also there. Overall, the combination of movement, scheme versatility, and rim protection at either the 5 or the 4 spot depending on the context make him an easy sell as an NBA defender. And even with some other questions, he's someone that teams should confidently be able to build with defensively in the future. Now we touched on it a few times on the defensive end, but Sar's athleticism is a pretty big part of who he is as an offensive player as well, especially in the open floor, and he converted at a high clip at about 1.5 points per possession, at times turning defense into offense. Occasionally he showed he could take it off the rim and at least get it to the timeline before getting it to a guard, and in more limited flashes he did even more than that taking it to the rim. Now the handle will need to take more strides before that's a huge part of his game, but it is there in some fashion and ahead of what some similar prospects in the past were able to do at the same age and in any situation that likes to push pace or has other defensive playmakers i'd expect this part of his game to shine a little bit more In more of a half court setting offensively, there is a level of upside that exists in a couple ways, some we'll get to later on, but the most tangible is what he can do as a play finisher. Often operating out of pick and roll or playing in the dunker spot extended, he has the tools to finish above the rim and provide some vertical spacing, and this should pop more as he plays with NBA level creators too. Now he is definitely a better roller than he is a screener right now, but the amount of trapping and hedging that was done to Perth led to a ton of touch screens, so that's not completely on him when you watch all of his film, but improvement there will be mostly frame related. And then as a road man, he'll need to continue to work on some of his control and ability to play comfortably off two and finishing more consistently in certain spots, more on that later. But in terms of a role that's most easily projectable for him in the league, this is it. I actually was pretty impressed by what he showed as a passer, primarily in those short roll situations, but some on dribble handoffs and on the interior as well. Even in his limited usage, he showed that he could make quick decisions, read the defense on the fly, and process where rotations were headed pretty well. Now we're probably not talking eventual playmaking hub or anything like that, but there's a base to be able to keep things flowing, running delays and DHOs, add value on those all important roles, and then also be able to make plays off of his own offense, be it a drive or a shooting opportunity especially as that pace continues to progress. Now one of the bigger now one of the bigger questions or swing skills for Sar is in his three point shot. It's not something that needs to be answered right away, but it is gonna decide a lot of who he is and where he'll be able to fit in best offensively. He shot about 29% from three on under two attempts a game, but has made significant progress from his days with OTE. He was much better from the free throw line this year with more attempts and lights out from the mid range and the opportunities that he got there, which were everything from short roll looks to even some fadeaways. Now mechanically, he can be a bit rigid at times with a heavily tucked elbow elbow and occasionally early loaded wrist and the footwork will need some more consistency but I think all the pieces are workable the fact that he has shot it with at least some volume doesn't guarantee anything coming to fruition but it makes it much more plausible than those who might just show it in workouts or only in a high school setting and being respectable here would not only allow him to play the full with more ease and add versatility but maybe more importantly would allow him to fully use his speed and flashes he's shown as a driver against more like-sized players or traditional fives in that sort of same way we see guys Guys like Chad, Wimby, Jaron Jackson, and others take advantage. It's definitely a swing skill, but if you buy him becoming passable as a shooter, and I'm optimistic he'll get there even if it takes a few years, it's hard not to like what that player will ultimately be in the NBA. They missed their first seven threes in game one. Put them on the back quarter, Silver. Outside, 
Sar works on Humphreys. Tough shot under pressure. Sar. Sar said, he's a star. Oh, yeah, that red eye. And he said to me, oh, do you live out near the airport? Hey, I'm in the city. Point six. They get it to Sar. On cue, and he fills it up. Sudel and Mil Durant. Many of the rest of his questions and improvement areas are in some way related to getting stronger and continuing to add to his frame. The immediate focus always goes to post ups and banging inside and that is important but just maintaining position while defending drives will be as well. Now he wasn't posted up nearly as much as you might expect. Pretty much every possession that I saw you're also seeing but it's apparent he'll need to find solutions here and probably be schemed around in some capacity. Not that it's super common in the league today either but players are bigger, stronger, faster and teams are pretty good at exploiting spots they think they have a mismatch. Now the rebounding piece is another that he'll need to make a concerted effort at improving and it comes back to the strength factor in a lot of ways too. I've spent a good amount of time looking at this specifically and he does do a pretty consistent job at finding a body and boxing out. He's far from lazy and he has the tools but it didn't always yield the best results whether it was conditioning related at times or trying to block shots or whatever else physically the numbers reflected that too. Finishing possessions is definitely a team effort at the end of the day but an anchoring a defense is fairly high on the list of responsibilities so this will be a point of emphasis as well. Golden Gate, oh, Joe. Sounds like some cigar and that chair. Hello, boy. Here in the third quarter for the first time in the game, Trey Kell fires unsuccessfully. Cotton. Unsuccessful. Loose ball. Wadstaff comes up with it. Seven seconds. Usher. And as we alluded to earlier, another one of his primary focuses will be improving as a finisher, specifically against contact and in the half court. There's a level of control and just upper body flexibility he hasn't quite found yet. And in addition to that, he doesn't have much of a push shot or a hook to finish more cleanly away from the rim. Now, some of this is purely strength related to be able to create better angles and ultimately help with some of the shot selection too. But it's something I noticed and though the numbers aren't super alarming, it shows up there as well. Isaac Humphreys denies him. Saar wins it back. Oh, oh, what a move. And tying all this together, there are some big picture questions in what role or roster context he could fit best into if he's not physical enough defensively at the five and can't shoot well enough to be the four in a lineup without a stretch five. Now, it's not the thing that I think will keep him from making an impact or even seeing the floor early given he is so young and already so good on defense. But that's a big question for him in a class where almost every top prospect has at least one. Alex R in all likelihood will land in the top three on draft night and may have the best shot at going number one. I don't think there are any prospects in this class with clear cut all star potential, but by the numbers we're going to get a couple at least. And I think he has the best chance of delivering that impact, especially as someone who could fairly easily get into all defense convos. His outside shot and strength development will have almost all the say in whether or not that happens, but he should be a positive and essential defensive piece from the beginning and those other areas we talked about will decide the rest of where he makes an impact as well. Well. As for landing spots, I like Washington most, and if Toronto is able to keep their pick, they are my second favorite, especially with the idea that you could run him with Olenek early on. After that, it's not the clearest in a lot of places, but I think Charlotte, Detroit, and Houston are all interesting for different reasons. 
There are a few comps for Sar that I like depending on where things go with his game. Evan Mobley is one of them as a lanky big with similar 4-5 concerns but one of the absolute best and most versatile defenders in the league and a solid offensive piece despite some high expectations there. Nick Claxton is another one that I like as an elite switch big and athlete and then if the shot becomes a more featured part of his game it could look more like a version of Jaron Jackson Jr. Now everyone is unique and it'll take time but I think those are some good references for who his game could resemble in the league. Alex Sar's combination of movement abilities, defensive impact, and versatility, along with the upside to score both inside and out, make him one of the clear most valuable prospects. Now, he's not a finished product, and whoever picks him will have that in mind, but his blended traits at that age will make him one of, if not the first name heard on draft night.